Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I am Arjun Chaudhary. We are on the top story the tracking for you on Thursday, the 15th of January. Pakistan government to ban terror outfits Haqqani and JUD. Violence continues in Bangladesh as opposition shutdown enters ninth day. And India's Apex Bank announces first rate cut since May 2013. And now for all the details. Pakistan government has decided to ban terror outfits, the Haqqani Network and the jamaat u -Dawa. The two globally banned extremist organizations have been freely operating in Pakistan so far with the patronage of the political and military leadership of the country. In what is seen as a paradigm shift in its anti-terrorism policy, Islamabad has decided to crack a whip on nearly a dozen militant organizations, including the Haqqanis and the JUD. The decision comes days after U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who visited Pakistan this week, urged the country to crack down on the two militant groups other than the Pakistan Taliban. The move to ban organizations which were once considered proxies of Pakistan is seen as a shift in its policy of discriminating between good and bad terrorists. The Nawaz Sharif government had vowed to act tough on all militants under its new national action plan derived after the Pakistan Taliban claimed responsibility for the Peshawar army school attack last month. Defence analysts in India said the move is a welcome step in combating terror. This particular announcement was expected and is actually a natural culmination of Senate, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry's visit to Pakistan during which he announced a large aid to Pakistan and I think uh, this must have been one of the quid pro quos. But uh, this shows that at least as far as western borders are concerned, Pakistan is serious as far as eradication of all radical outfits are concerned. JUD is a supposed charity face of luxury e Toiba, the banned terror outfit led by Hafiz Said, who India and the United States blame for masterminding the 2008 attack on India's commercial hub Mumbai, which killed 166 people. The Haqqani network, founded by Afghan warlord Jalaluddin Haqqani, has been blamed for a number of targeted attacks on US and NATO and Afghanistan. The militia is believed to have its operational base in Pakistan's North Waziristan. It was also behind the 2008 suicide bomb attack on the Indian embassy in Kabul, which killed nearly 60 people. Another organization which Islamabad has proposed to ban is Harkat ul Jihad Islami, an insurgent group that is active in India's Jammu and Kashmir. With the ban, Pakistan aims at freezing their assets, blocking funding sources, and monitoring them regularly. The Nawaz Sharif government has decided to replace a prosecutor in the 2611 Mumbai attacks trial. This comes after the government came under heavy criticism over the bail of the attack mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakfi last month. India blamed the frivolous attitude of the prosecution team in Pakistan as the reason behind him getting bail. Following India's strong protest, Pakistan government had detained Lakfi under the Maintenance of Public Order Act. Lakfi, along with seven others, were arrested in 2009 for plotting the Mumbai terror attacks. The Islamabad High Court is currently holding in-camera trial of the case following his detention. The nationwide blockade in Bangladesh has claimed 19 lives so far as it completed its ninth day on Thursday. The Bangladesh Nationalist Party had announced an indefinite shutdown, demanding fresh elections in the country under a caretaker government. BNP supporters in Ghazipur, some 20 miles north of capital Dhaka, set fire to a bus in the VRs of Thursday, killing a helper sleeping inside the vehicle. This was the second attack by the party targeting public transport. On Wednesday, the shutdown supporters threw petrol bombs at a crowded bus in Mithapukur, some 170 miles from Dhaka, burning four passengers on board. The bus, which got completely destroyed in the attack, also left dozens of commuters critically injured. The BNP and its 20-party alliance have been unleashing a spree of violence across the country since last week with an aim to paralyze the country. BNP Supremo Begum Khalid Azia had called for a nationwide shutdown after she was rejected permission to hold an anti-government rally on the first anniversary of the controversial general elections. 
The party which had boycotted the 2014 polls is demanding fresh election in Bangladesh under a non-partisan caretaker system, an arrangement which was abolished in 2008 after it was annulled by the Supreme Court. At least five suspects in the Peshawar Army school attack have been arrested across the border in eastern Afghanistan. Pakistan intelligence along with Afghan security forces apprehended the suspects for their alleged involvement in the gruesome massacre last month. According to reports, all the men hail from Pakistan and are key commanders of a proscribed outfit. Pakistan witnessed its biggest Taliban attack on December 16th when six heavily armed men stormed into the army school, opening fire at the students and staff members, killing 142 people. The Taliban, which claimed responsibility for the strike, said it was in retaliation to the ongoing Pakistani army crackdown in Waziristan. The Reserve Bank of India surprised markets by cutting rates at an unscheduled meeting on Thursday. It slashed the repo rate by 25 basis points to 7.75%, its first rate cut in nearly two years. Analysts say this could be the start of an easing cycle. Here is a report. The Finance Ministry and Corporate India have been lobbying for this cut for months, but Central Bank Governor Raghuram Rajan stood firm. He said he won't act until he's convinced inflation is easing. And finally, it has. December's consumer inflation came in at 5%, while November wholesale prices flatlined. The government hailed the move. It will lead to more money in the hands of the consumer, greater spending. It's positive for the Indian economy. And it will certainly help in reviving the investment cycle that the government is seeking to restore. Analysts say more rate cuts are on the cards, given benign oil and commodity prices. India imports two-thirds of its oil needs so lower prices can narrow its trade gap considerably. Some say this is the start of an easing cycle. Other analysts say rate cuts from other banks could also be on the cards in the coming months. It will depend upon what is the risk aversion in the system. It also depends on what the NPA levels of the banks are, how much demand is there in the system. So I think uh, there could be uh, uh, a question mark on how fast this will get transmitted uh, going ahead. On its part, the government says it's committed to keeping to its budget as much as possible to try and rein in the fiscal deficit. When Dr. Rajan took office in 2013, he made it clear that taming inflation was his priority. Now with prices on a downward trajectory, it seems the central bank is ready to gun for growth. Anjali Mathai for South Asia Newsline, Mumbai. Pope Francis on Thursday concluded his two-day Sri Lanka tour after calling for reconciliation in the island nation, which is still recovering from a nearly three-decade-long ethnic conflict. The Pope has now headed to Philippines. Scores of people continue to flock capital Colombo even on Thursday to seek Pope Francis's blessings before he departed Sri Lanka to start the second leg of his apostolic Asia tour. A day before he left for Philippines, the Pope visited a Buddhist temple on Wednesday to pay respect to the Buddhist community, which comprises 70% of the total population in Sri Lanka. The trip also marked the opening of a golden casket, an event that usually takes place once a year on special occasions. The casket contains the relics of two important disciples of the Buddha. The Pope's visit was aimed to focus on post-war settlement and interfaith harmony in the country after lingering ethnic violence. The 1.5 million strong Christian community in Sri Lanka accounts for nearly 7% of the Buddhist majority population there. Agrarian communities across India continue to indulge in flamboyant Thanksgiving as they mark the harvest festival in different forms. Take a look. Rustic fervor and festive spirit kept the nation gripped as celebrations around Makar Sakranti kept going even on Thursday. In northeastern Assam, the day is celebrated as Mag Bihu or Bugali Bihu. People build up meji, a temporary structure made of firewood, bamboo and haystacks, which is burned to offer prayers to fire god. Residents of provincial capital Guwahati also throng local markets before the feasts. Many said the festival gives them a chance to prepare traditional delicacies, much of which have fallen off from the daily fare. Many said festivals like Bihu brought friends and family together. 
अनाज से भरपूर है और हम हमारे बंधु बांधवों को आमंत्रण करते हैं और ये भोग भोगाली उत्सव हम मनाते हैं Locals in neighboring Tripura took to rangoli making to adorn their houses. Celebrations were at their peak in Tamil Nadu too, as people celebrated Pongal, one of the southern state's main festivals. The four-day festival symbolizes thanking the sun god for a good harvest by consecrating the first grain to him. Farm animals are also worshipped during this time. The Pongal pangdige serap serapaga konda do adarin namma Tamilar gulade panbada ke panbade. In Coimbatore, locals took to preparing traditional dishes apart from the merry-making. The big festival is also celebrated in neighboring states of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. We are very happy to celebrate this Pongal celebration without any, without any variations in caste, creed and religion. We celebrate this harmony Pongal. The main focus of this celebrating is we all together as one family we celebrate this festival of harvest. So we all together wish everyone a happy Pongal. Makkar Sakranti celebrates the advent of spring and the northward journey of the sun as it enters the Capricorn from the Tropic of Cancer which coincides with the beginning of longer days. Global cinema has experimented enough with its sci-fi films. Now an Indian film is set to give a dose right from its laboratory of thrillers. Will it combine the right chemicals? Take a look at what are the side effects of this weekend's release. He is the heartthrob of many and he has females wooing after him. But this time he turns a beast. Actor Vikram's latest offering, I, seems to have succeeded in experimenting not just in the labs but on screen too. The Tamil superstar who is teaming up with ace director Shankar promoted his film in entertainment capital Mumbai. Oscar award winner and music composer A.R. Rahman also joined in. Vikram, who dons three varied roles, said playing a beastly character made him feel powerful. I've never felt like that in any character in my life. I felt that kind of a strength in that character. And uh, while doing the role, while doing the song, beautiful music, the sets were like phenomenal and Shankar sir had this wonderful concept and uh, Bosco's movements, everything like, you know, kind of gave me that one thrill and like I was doing something spectacular. Right. And I just couldn't wait to see it on screen. Rahman said it was a unique experience to compose romantic songs for a character with negative shades. I just nurtured and, and came to this level and so we just had a discussion. Both of us were jamming for a long three days. Right. And we wanted all the lyrics to be very simple and very powerful, just two lines kind of thing. I is the story about a bodybuilder and model Lingeshan in love with Divya. When another model, John, discovers Lingeshan's adulation, he plans to spoil his career by injecting a chemical. As the medicine begins to have side effects on Lingeshan, it turns him into a deformed hunchback out to take revenge from John for ruining his life. The Tamil film also stars Amy Jackson, Upen Patel, Santhanam and Ram Kumar Ganeshan and has been dubbed in Hindi and Telugu. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Pakistan government to ban terror outfits Haqqani and JUD. Violence continues in Bangladesh as opposition shutdown enters ninth day. And India's Apex Bank announces first rate cut since May 2013. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianews9.com. We can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianews9 and follow us on Twitter at SAsianews9. That's only tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.